Today we will learn important things about reproduction and the difference between sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Reproduction is a process in which an organism produces its offspring. For example, an amoeba gives birth to another amoeba. A plant produces another plant similar to it and human beings produce children. We know that various processes like nutrition, respiration, excretion, etc. help to keep the organism alive. Reproduction is different from these processes. It helps the organism to keep its species alive. Without reproduction, no life is possible on earth. Let's talk about important parameters of reproduction. You must be knowing that seed of mango produces a mango tree. It does not produce a berry plant. Why is it so? Let me tell you. The body of every organism is made up of cells that consist of a nucleus that contains DNA. Basically, every cell contains a nucleus which is made up of chromosomes. The chromosomes contain DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid that contains information of hereditary characters that are transmitted from parent to offspring. Because of this reason, the characters of offspring seem similar to the parents and therefore every organism can produce an organism similar to it. Basically, the main event in reproduction is producing a replica of DNA. The replica of DNA in the cell is produced by various chemical reactions. After producing the replica of DNA, cells produce other cellular apparatus and then it gets divided such that its cell gets DNA. As the biochemical processes are not ideal, therefore we can see some differences between the replicated DNA and the parent DNA. Because of these variations, every organism in the population has some unique features which makes it distinct in the population. We call it diversity. Often, some variations are helpful for the protection of the species. Let's understand this with an example. Suppose there is a bacteria which cannot withstand very low temperature. During reproduction, it produces some bacteria which can tolerate very low temperature. If the climate becomes colder, then many bacteria will vanish. However, those which can withstand cold climate help the species to survive. This is how variations are helpful for the survival of species. Therefore, we say that variations during reproduction are the basis of evolution. We will discuss this in another video. We know there are two methods of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Let's understand them through comparison. The method of reproduction in which a single individual produces another individual is called asexual reproduction. For example, unicellular organisms like amoeba, hydra, produces their next generation by asexual reproduction. Some plants like sugarcane, rose, potato can be produced from any part of the plant. This is also asexual reproduction. 
in contrast to this the reproduction in which two individuals take part is called sexual reproduction for example human beings flowering plants various animals etc produce new organisms by sexual reproduction if male and female both take part in sexual reproduction then the amount of dna that the offspring get will be twice that of the individual dna therefore the amount of dna goes on increasing over generations because of this the control over cellular organization might reduce to solve this problem there are distinct organs for sexual reproduction which reduces the number of chromosomes to half therefore the amount of dna is reduced to half by the process of meiosis due to this male gamete in male and female gamete in female are produced which contain half the dna during fertilization male gamete combines with female gamete so as to produce zygote in which the amount of dna is restored in case of asexual reproduction a replica of dna is formed for the offspring in this process no male gamete and female gametes are produced and therefore there will be no fertilization and so there will be no zygote two kinds of reproduction are similar for the fact that the number of chromosomes or the amount of dna in offspring is similar to that of each parent in asexual reproduction offspring is formed from single individuals therefore there are not many variations in the dna due to this there is a possibility of extinction of the species during unfavorable conditions in sexual reproduction the dna of offspring is produced from the combination of both the parents therefore variations are more therefore the possibility of survival of the species during unfavorable conditions are high asexual reproduction is faster as compared to sexual reproduction today we have learned important things about reproduction and the difference between sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction learn about the types of asexual reproduction we know that some organisms produce the next generation from single parents like amoeba hydra etc the reproduction in which only one parent participates is called asexual reproduction variety of asexual reproduction is found in different organisms on the basis of it there are different types of asexual reproduction today let's learn about the types of asexual reproduction fission some organisms produce new organisms by cell division we call this method fission amoeba is a unicellular organism in amoeba reproduction begins with the division of the nucleus when division of the nucleus is complete the cells also divide into two parts this division can occur from any part of the amoeba during the division process each cell carries one nucleus with them in this way the formation of two cells by the division of one cell is called binary fission 
Some unicellular organisms, such as Leishmania's body structure, is more organized. In such organisms, after the division of the nucleus, the cell divides from a fixed orientation. In some organisms, such as the malaria parasite Plasmodium, one cell divides in several cells. We call it multiple fission. Fragmentation Some multicellular organisms, such as Spirogyra, which is an algae, have simple body structure. Generally, such organisms are just group of different cells. When they are fully grown, they break into small pieces. Each part or fragment develops into a new organism. This method of reproduction is called fragmentation. Body structures of other multicellular organisms are complex. In such cases, there is formation of tissue from cells and formation of organs from tissues. The location of organs is fixed in the body, due to which cell-by-cell -cell division of these organisms is not possible. Therefore, fragmentation is not seen in such organisms. In such organisms, we see a complex process of reproduction. You must have seen that lizards separate their tail from body under adverse circumstances. Later, the lizard regenerates its tail again. Similarly, in the method of regeneration, if some organisms like planaria cut down into different parts, each part develops into new planaria. This method of reproduction can also be seen in Hydra. Budding Some organisms such as Hydra have cells with regenerative potential. When the Hydra is fully grown, the regenerative cells divide by creating a bulge that is a bud on the body wall. This bud develops into small hydra. Upon sufficient growth, these organisms separate from parent hydra and become independent organisms. In favorable circumstances, some plants can be grown from their part like root, stem, leaves or buds. This is called as Vegetative propagation. For example, carrot, radish, sweet potato, etc., can be grown from the root of the plant. Rose, ginger, etc., from the stem of plants. Bryophyllum can be produced from the leaves of the plants. Sugarcane and various types of grasses can be produced from buds. Vegetative propagation can be used in agriculture for the production of grapes, bananas, oranges, jasmine, sugarcane, etc. For this, techniques like layering, grafting, etc. can be used. The method in which a portion of an above ground stem is buried in the soil so as to grow a new plant attached to the parent plant is called layering. Similarly, the method of joining the parts of two different plants so as to grow a new plant is called grafting. Collect information about them yourself. Flowers and fruits can be obtained in less time from plants grown by such technology than from plants grown by seeds. Spore formation If you take a piece of bread, and soak it in water and keep it in a moist and dark place. Then, within one or two days, you will see some thread-like structures developing on it. It is a hyphae of rhizopus. If you observe the vertical fibers with a microscope, 
then you will be able to see a blob on a stick structures on it these structures are called sporangia special cells are found in these structures which are called spores a thick wall protects the spores under favorable conditions this wall breaks and spores get spread at appropriate temperatures and humidity these spores begin to grow and form new fungus this method of reproduction is known as spore formation now you must have understood various methods of asexual reproduction today we have learned the types of asexual reproduction today we will learn sexual reproduction in plants there are many organisms in the world such as flowering plants humans various animals etc which require male and females to produce offspring such a method of reproduction in which two parents participate is called sexual reproduction today we will discuss sexual reproduction in plants flowering plants also called angiosperms produce offspring through sexual reproduction the reproductive organs of these plants are found in flowers can you tell me which are the main parts of the flower think think let me tell you the outer part of the flower which looks like green leaves is called sepal together the sepals form calyx the sepals protect the inner parts when the flower is in the form of a bud the colorful part of the flower that looks like leaves are called petals all the petals together are called corolla within the circle of petals in the flower you will see some thin tubes the top of which is inflated each of these is the male reproductive organ of the plant called stamen the long thin tube like part of the stamens is called the filament and the inflated upper part is called the anther the anther generates pollen grains and carries them within it pollen grains are generally yellow if you touch the anther you will have yellow powder on your hand which are pollen grains in pollen grains male gametes of the plant can be found the color of petals and their fragrance attract insects these insects play an important role in moving pollen grains from one flower to another in the center of the flower you will see a jug like part it is called pistil it is the female reproductive part of the plant it has three parts the swollen bottom part is the ovary the middle elongated part is the style and the terminal part which may be sticky is the stigma the ovary contains ovules and each ovule has one egg cell egg cell is the female gamete of the plant there are some flowers in the world such as hibiscus flowers in which both the stamens and the pistils are present in the same flower these are called bisexual flowers while some flowers such as papaya flowers have any one of the reproductive organs like stamen or pistil these are called unisexual flowers during reproduction of flowering plants it is necessary to transfer pollen grain to stigma we call this as pollination 
If the pollen grain is transferred from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the same flower, it is called self-pollination. When pollen grain is transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower, it is called cross-pollination. Pollination is done with the help of inorganic components such as air, water, or biological components such as insects, animals, etc. When pollen grains are pollinated on the stigma of a flower, there is development of a tube from the pollen grain which passes through the style and reaches to the embryo sac of an ovule. Two male gametes enter the embryo sac from the pollen grain. The ovule consists of an embryo sac that is oval shaped with eight cells and one of its cell is the egg cell or female gamete. A male gamete released from the pollen tube fuses with the female gamete to produce a zygote. Process of fusion of germ cells so as to form zygote is called fertilization. Similarly, the second male gametes fuses with two polar nuclei to form an endosperm. Since there are two types of fusion in the embryo sac, fusion of germ cells and fusion of male gametes with the bipolar nuclei, hence such kind of fertilization is called double fertilization. After fertilization, the zygote divides several times in the ovule, causing its transformation in the embryo. Endosperm provides nutrition to the embryo. At the same time, the ovary changes into fruit. During this activity, other parts of the flower, like sepals, petals, stamens, stems, and stigma, fall off. The transition of the ovule occurs in a hard covering called a seed. The seed protects the embryo. A seed usually consists of a seed coat, cotyledon, and an embryo axis. The plumule of the embryonic axis are future shoot and the radical is the future root. Cotyledons are inflated structures in which the food of the embryo is preserved. In a favorable condition, the embryo develops into seedlings, which we call germination. The newborn develops and transforms into a new plant. So now you must have understood the sexual reproduction in plants very well. For your homework, collect some flowers and try to draw their structures in your drawing book. So today we have learned sexual reproduction in plants. We will learn about sexual reproduction in animals. We know that two parents participate in sexual reproduction. During sexual reproduction, the male germ cells is fused with the female germ cell to produce a zygote and develops into a new organism. Let's understand sexual reproduction in humans. Sexual maturity of parents is necessary in sexual reproduction. As a person grows in age, many changes occur in the body such as increase in length and weight. These are only physical changes. In the context of sexual maturity, boys and girls undergo various changes in the age group of 10 to 14 years. For example, appearance of body development of reproductive organs and the different tissues which are helpful 
in sexual reproduction, etc. Moreover, there are different signs of sexual maturity, such as thin hair appears on the legs and arms, thick hair grows in the armpits and in the genital area, between the thighs, the skin becomes oily, pimples may appear on the skin, and so on. Along with physical and mental changes, there is occurrence of some hormonal and emotional changes too. For example, the individual becomes more aware of himself and towards opposite sex. During this period, there are some changes which are different in boys and girls, such as in boys, there is appearance of a beard and moustache on the face, cracking of the voice, penis occasionally begins to become enlarged and erect either in the daydreams or at night, etc. Similarly, in girls, the breast size increases, the color of the nipples becomes darker, girls begin to menstruate, etc. Keep in mind that these changes occur slowly over time. All these changes may occur at different ages in different individuals. Also, it is not necessary that all changes occur in a person at the same time. These are slow changes with respect to time. From birth to adolescence, the body primarily focuses on physical growth. But as the rate of physical growth slows down in the early years of adolescence, the reproductive tissue begins to develop. This period of adolescence is called puberty. Males and females become ready for reproduction after sexual maturity. Let us now understand the male reproductive system in humans. The male reproductive system in humans consists of pair of testes, the seminal vesicle, the vas deferens, the prostate gland, the urethra and the penis. Each testis produces male germ cells called sperm. Since the temperature required for the generation of sperms is less than body temperature, the testes are located outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. A sperm is a microstructure and contains genetic material and a long tail that allows it to float in the female reproductive cell. Testes also produce a hormone called testosterone which controls sperm production as well as the symptoms of puberty in boys. Transport of sperm is carried by vas deferens. The vas deferens joins with the tube coming from the bladder to form a joint tube. The secretions coming from the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland provide fluid medium for the transportation of sperm and also provide nourishment to the sperm. The penis transport the secretion to the female reproductive organ. Now, let's understand the female reproductive system in human. The female reproductive system consists of ovaries, oviducts, which are also known as fallopian tubes, the uterus and the vagina. A female germ cell is called an egg cell is formed in the ovary. Various hormones such as estrogen are also produced in the ovaries. From the birth of a girl, there are many immature eggs present in the ovaries. They begin to mature at puberty. An egg is matured by one of the two ovaries every month. It is carried by the fallopian tube into elastic bag-like structure called the uterus. The ureters and the vagina are attached to the cylinder-shaped cervix. 
at the time of sexual intercourse between human males and human females sperm are transported from male's body to the vagina the sperm reach up to the oviduct by moving outward in the fallopian tube fusion of sperm and egg cell may occur we call it as fertilization this produces a fertilized egg which is called zygote zygote divides several times and in 4 to 5 days it forms a ball like structure called embryo this embryo attaches to the uterine wall where it develops for this a disk like structure is developed in the wall of the uterus which is called placenta the placenta is attached to the embryo by the umbilical cord with the help of the umbilical cord the placenta supplies glucose oxygen and essential substances to the fetus similarly it removes carbon dioxide and other excretory products produced by the fetus in about 9 months after pregnancy the fetus is fully developed and ready for delivery during delivery there is rhythmic contraction of the uterine muscles that leads to the birth of an infant so now you must have understood the function of sexual reproduction in humans today we have learned about sexual reproduction in animals today we will learn about menstruation and reproductive health let's discuss menstruation first males and females participate in sexual reproduction in human reproduction each month one egg cell is matured by one of the two ovaries in the woman's body if there is a fusion of sperm and egg in the oviduct a fertilized egg is produced which is called zygote zygote get implanted on the wall of the uterus therefore the uterus also prepares itself every month to receive the fertilized egg its lining become fleshy and spongy so that the fetus receives nourishment but in case fertilization doesn't occur The egg cell can survive only for one day. Therefore, there is no need for the new layer when fertilization does not occur. Therefore, this layer is slowly broken and comes out from the vaginal tract in the form of blood and mucus. After which, the uterine wall undergoes repair. This entire process is completed in about two to eight days. and is repeated almost every month this action is called menstruation the cycle of menstruation starts from puberty and continues till the age of 45 to 55 it is stopped at pregnancy this process is controlled by hormones a woman has a lot of pain during menstruation due to loss of blood in excess amount women also feel weak women are more likely to get infected during this period therefore during this period comfort and personal hygiene are necessary now let's know about the reproductive health reproductive health refers to all aspects of reproduction such as physical emotional practical and social health there can be many problems related to reproductive health such as inequality between boy and girl in society rights like child marriage family pressure for having children 
and restrictions laid by government, etc. Pregnancy at a young age or not keeping intervals between children, frequent pregnancies, often causes adverse effect on the physical health of the woman. If pregnancy occurs against the woman's will, then it can cause mental, physical and financial problems. Unprotected sex also increases the chances of sexual transmission of many diseases. If there is no control over the childbirths, then there is a problem of excessive population growth, which is called population explosion. This causes problems such as lack of food and resources, social inequality, etc. Therefore, every person should have the necessary information related to reproductive health. Various solutions of contraception are discovered to solve these problems. Let us know about them. Condom which covers penis, devices such as the diaphragm, cervical cap, vault, etc. which can be kept in the vagina are several devices made of rubber called mechanical barrier. They prevent sperm from reaching the egg due to which pregnancy can be avoided. These barriers also help to prevent transmission of sexually transmitted diseases. Contraceptive pills are the medicines consumed by women that alter the hormone balance. This does not lead to release of egg and hence there is no possibility of fertilization. They may also have some side effects. Intrauterine contraceptive device or IUCD such as loops, copper tea, etc. are placed in the uterus by experienced doctors or nurses. These devices reduce sperm mobility and the fertilization ability. Surgical methods are useful for those who do not want further pregnancy. In one of the methods, sperm transfer is prevented by blocking the male vas deferens. Such technique is called vasectomy. In the same way, the eggs are prevented from reaching the uterus by blocking the fallopian tube. This technique is called tubectomy. Surgically, unwanted fetus can also be removed from the uterus. This is called abortion. Due to inequality between male and female in the society, some people perform sex-selective abortion of the female fetus after performing a test for determining the sex of the fetus. This is illegal. Due to this, child sex ratio in our country is decreasing sharply. We need to maintain the male-female sex ratio for a healthy society. So today we have learned about menstruation and reproductive health. 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 health.